Hello, this is my DP Computer Science one pager on binary and hexadecimal. Um, it turns out that working in binary and hexadecimal are really nice and there's a relationship there that I really want to make sure um, students know how to leverage. Um, and in this video we're going to talk about how to convert from binary to hexadecimal and hexadecimal back to binary. And I really want to stress that you should never go from binary to base 10 to hexadecimal or hexadecimal to base 10 to binary. There's a temptation to do that because we know base 10, but it turns out there's a relationship here that you can leverage to make things really easy. So in our last one pager, what we did was we talked about how to build this table. And so you build this table, we know what base 10 is, that's just counting like normally, 0 through 9, and then we say 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It looks a little funny because I put them in columns. And then we want to build the, the pairing table in base 2. And we can do that by using that nice little trick we talked about is by doing 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, all the way down. Then 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, all the way down. Then 4 zeros, 4 ones, 4 zeros, 4 ones, 8 zeros, 8 ones. And it turns out when you do it that way and you do the conversion, it works out perfectly that 0 base 10, 0 in base 2, 1 in base 10, 1 in base 2, all the way down. And likewise, we can represent base 16 by just going 0 through F um, to represent those numbers. And so what we know is that 15 in base 10 is 1, 1, 1, 1 in base 2, which is the same as F in base 16. And what we notice right away is that the first, the, 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 the unit digit in base 16 can be represented by four base 2 digits. And that's what's really important here. So if we come down here and we look at a classic example, and it says, convert the below binary value to hexadecimal. And this is what we really want to watch. You do not convert to base 10 and then to hex. That will take far too long, and it's more likely you'll make a mistake. What you do is you leverage this, this idea that four bits, or a nibble as we call it, four bits represents one hexadecimal digit. So step one is you take a pen and underline groups of four digits starting from the right. And I'll zoom in a little bit here again, fit. All right, starting from the right. So what we do is we underline, starting from here, we have one, zero, you know, zero, one, zero, one, there's four, one, 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 there's four, and then we have zero, one, zero, zero. If for some reason you get to this last one and you don't have four, you add a zero. Because this question really, that number, that zero there is, is, a, is a useless digit. Actually, that would be a better, that would be a more, that would be how someone would actually write that number. But I put it there because it's the first time students are doing this, and I want them to understand that you want to group them in groups of four. But if you get here and you don't have four in your last one, you just add zeros. And then, using that table, which you now know deeply and you have internalized, you can convert those groups of four into hexadecimal values. So I know that 0, 1, 0, 1 is 5, so I put 5 in hexadecimal. I know that 1, 1, 1, 1 is F, so I put F in hexadecimal. And again, you can confirm it up here, 1, 1, 1, 1, F. And I know that 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4. So that means 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 is the same as 4, F, 5 in hexadecimal or base 16. And this is, this is the thing. Computers don't care about hexadecimal. People care about hexadecimal because it allows you to take these really large binary values and shrink them down into something that we can read really quickly. And again here, like I said, remember to include the base 16 indicator. If no base is indicated, we assume it is in base 10. With base 16, there's obviously an issue since there's no A. So if you write a base 16, someone will look at this and say, oh yeah, that's obviously base 16. But technically, if I gave you this value without that little sub 2 there, that, that could be thought of as a base 10 number, and it actually should be. And down here, we know 101 is very different than 101 in base 2. So now let's go the other way. And I haven't done this yet, but let's do it now. So let's change my color to red. So if we have A3, 4, F, B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that A, and let's write A in hexadecimal, in binary. So I'm going to come up to the top, and let's take a look. So here's A. So A is 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 0. There's the A. Let's make that red. And then we have 3. Okay, so 3 in hexadecimal. Now when you get better at this, you'll be able to do this quickly. You're going to go, you have to put 4 digits. So 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. Because this is 1, 2. 
Right? We're just thinking of this on its own. And now we want 4 in hexadecimal. So 4 is going to be, sorry, we want 4 in binary. 0, 1, 0, 0. Pull that back a bit. There we go. It's a little nicer. Oops. There we go. A little nicer. Okay. Now we want F, and we know F is 1, 1, 1, 1. And we want B. So B is 11, if you remember, in base 10. So I need to make 11 using these four digits. So 11 is going to be 8. So it's going to be 1. But if I go 8 plus 4, that's 9, 10, 11, 12. That's no good. So 0, 8 plus 2. So plus 2 more goes 8, 9, 10, 11. So therefore, A3, 4, F, B in binary is 1010011011011. One, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one. And we can, of course, confirm that on our table up above. So again, what's the big takeaway? The big takeaway is don't ever go from binary to base 10 to base 16. Once you understand the relationship between binary and base 16, you can very quickly do this conversion. And so for those of you in my class, I encourage you to make a tool where maybe the user inputs a binary value and you get the base 16, or vice versa, because writing the algorithm for this is a great way to practice this skill. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out, and I've put a link in this document to a shared version of this one pager. Please feel free to use it however you want if you're a teacher out there teaching stuff. Have a great day.